welcome to my part 2 on guides for classes and guts in black powder. In today's video I will be going over the line infantry class. As of writing this video, the game's version is in version 0.11.7b and things will most likely be subject to change. This video will be a comprehensive and instructive guide on how to effectively play the line infantry the best. Make sure to watch all the way through because some tips I give are a little more complex than others. So starting with our first tip, you should probably know your place as a line infantry player. You are typically a close quarters combat fighter and are usually the person who should be in the front of everyone else fighting. This applies to both you and players who play the officer class. But the officer class is for another day. For now, all you need to know is that you should be in the front dealing with the hordes with other players. Moving on to our second tip for this guide, what weapons are useless? Before I even list off these weapons, I just want to say it is very possible these weapons may get buffed and will become useful again in the near future. First off, the new weapon the game just added, the rifle, you might be thinking at first, wait, this gun has amazing penetration and does super high damage. There's no way this gun can be bad. Well, that's until you look at the downsides of this gun. First of all, the gun has no bayonet, and you cannot wipe out hordes with your bayonet during a charge. You can argue that you use the heavy saber for this, which I will get into later, but the other downside is that the gun takes longer to reload than a musket. This is probably the most important reason as to why this gun is useless. The musket has a very high accuracy and will hit its shots 99% of the time, just like the rifle. The musket also has a penetration of 10, and the rifle has a penetration of 15, which is not a massive difference. The only upside the rifle has against the musket is that it has a scope you can aim down, but that doesn't really matter at all. The second weapon I want to talk about is a lance. This one will probably surprise you, but let me explain. With the addition of the heavy saber into the game, the lance has become effectively useless. The heavy saber swings only slightly slower than the lance, and it deals only 10 less damage than a lance, which is not a huge difference when you use both weapons realistically. Basically, by using the lance, you are giving up a gun that could aid you in taking out barrels or hordes if needed, while the heavy saber just replaces your saber and lets you deal with hordes just as effectively as a lance would, if not better sometimes. Now, on to our next tip. Moving on to our third tip for this guide, how to use the carbine. The carbine is a weapon I personally do not use very much, but nevertheless here are some good strategies for using this gun. The main thing a lot of players do is they like to spam the shove ability while another player takes out the stunned zombies. The only downside I see to this is that the carbine can only stun 3 zombies at a time, so it's okay. Another strategy I see a lot of carbine players do is they actually choose to never use their gun unless it's for an emergency or if they need to shoot barrels. The only issue with this way of using the carbine is that the gun is not amazingly accurate, making it a little difficult sometimes to snipe single barrels from afar. There honestly aren't many other tips that I can give for the carbine since it's a very, very simple weapon. So we'll move on to our next weapon, the musket. Now for the fourth tip for this guide, how to use the musket. This gun is probably the most versatile weapon in the entire game. It has an average reload speed of 9 seconds, it has a bayonet which is good for charges and also deals insane amounts of damage to zombies, and is amazing at sniping barrels from afar on maps like Patacone. Overall, this weapon may be basic, but it's really good. First things first, you might want to learn how to use the gun's bayonet. The bayonet can be devastating and can be used to take out individual zombies in just one hit if you use it right. All you have to do is go into first person, angle your camera slightly up so the bayonet will aim for their head, and use only the understab. The overstab takes too long to stab, so using the understab 
and aiming for the head will kill zombies in one hit very fast. The next thing is the gun's charge ability. When an officer uses a charge, you gain a temporary charge where your musket will deal five times its base damage, one-shotting everything in its path and letting you run through an entire horde. Overall, the musket is a very great weapon and lets you both deal with barrels and hordes of zombies very effectively if used correctly. Alright, for this part, I'm going to have to do a physical representation of this because on paper this is a little bit hard to explain. So, I'm going to be going over how to use the heavy saber the most effectively and how to use the saber the most effectively. Now, the heavy saber is more undoubtedly the way better version of the saber. With on most objective maps, the heavy saber is two-shotting pretty much any zombie it hits with its understab. And the saber taking about three, sometimes even four or five, depending if it's like Copenhagen or Cobb, to kill a zombie. Now, your do's and don'ts should be never, ever, no matter what it is, you should absolutely never use your left or your right swing for the heavy saber. This is because your left and your right swing both deal 27 damage and can't even kill a runner, which is really weak. For comparison, the regular saber, no matter what way you swing in, deals 30 damage, while the heavy saber side swings only deal 27. So yeah, you can't kill runners with this unless you hit them in the head with it, which is very unlikely. Also, it swings just way slower than an understab, as you can see swings way lower, so there is absolutely no reason why you should ever be using your side stabs. In fact, make sure you have your direction lock on for your understab. This helps a lot just in case, you know, you're moving your mouse around a lot, you're doing a lot of this, something like that. Helps out a lot. Now, you also have an overstab, but honestly, this isn't very useful, and I'll explain why in just a second, but you can still use it. It's pretty good against zappers, I would say. It lets you target the zombie's head more easily, just like that. Now I'll explain why you don't really need to do that. Just lock your thing on down, and then do a jump and stab. It'll still hit them in the head. In fact, it even has more reach than the overstab. So, you'll most likely hit them if you do this instead of the overstab. So now, I will explain how to use this in actual combat. And by explain, I mean just show you. So, jump and stab, one tap, jump and stab, one tap, and now one, two, as you can see, it takes a few body shots to kill them. This is how it is for pretty much every objective map. The other nice thing about this is that it's really, really useful for taking out hordes, because of its long range. So this is in fact the best melee weapon for line infantry, and there's absolutely no reason why you should be using the regular saber if you have the heavy saber. So now, I'm going to be explaining how to use the regular saber. This is not much different from the heavy saber, except for its left and right swings both deal 30 damage, just like all of its swings. So, every swing deals the same damage, meaning it's more consistent all around. So if you like a more consistent weapon, and you don't like locking on your direction, then the saber is probably for you. And also, this weapon is literally for every class in the game, except for the chaplain, obviously. So, you're gonna have to get used to it whether you like it or not. So, some things to note is that you can hit headshots with this, actually probably even easier than the heavy saber, with this swing. As you can see, it angles pretty much right at their head, and will most likely hit a headshot. This will deal 60 damage and one shot usually most zombies on any objective map. However, sometimes it does take two headshots to kill a zombie on some objective maps. Now, a way to deal with hordes is to use your understab. Your understab, yes, it will do less damage, but it's safer, so you'll be at more of a distance as compared to this, which you have to be a little bit more closer for, but not really. But even then, you can also use this to deal with hordes. It's just, you know, a little more dangerous. Wouldn't fully recommend it, but it deals with them faster. This deals with them slower, but is more safe. And it's also 
the best way to deal with runners because you know they kind of just come at your feet so you just do a quick stat and you get them so now i will explain how to use it or again i mean show how to use it so as you can see i can do a jump instead build one shots and it takes one two three body shots and now if i were to use this swing as long as i aim for the head it'll still one tap Sometimes you'll miss, and that happens. But overall, the saber is very effective. Of course, it doesn't clear out hordes as easily as the heavy saber, but it is all around way more consistent. And you can hit a headshot just like this all day, all day long. Headshot, 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 all day long. Just like that. So, that's all you really need to know for the heavy saber. So now, moving on to our next part. Moving on to our sixth tip for this guide, be a hero. This tip might be a bit controversial amongst mobile players, be warned, but I am encouraging you to be a hero. Save your teammates. Obviously, do not ever run to save someone if you know you cannot come back alive. A good example of being a hero is you hear a runner tackle someone behind you, but you are fighting a small horde in front of you. What you should do is turn around and save your friend. Another example is someone's grabbed by two shamblers but a barrel is near, but it only just dropped its torch and you see an opening to save them. Instead of backing away in fear, go up and stab the zombies off the person and then quickly back away. By doing this, you are keeping more of your teammates alive. And while I'm on the topic of this, you should also be more vigilant and pay attention to your surroundings more often. Again, I know this is controversial amongst mobile players, but pay attention to your surroundings. It might just save someone's life, and sometimes, even your own. So now, let's go over everything we've learned in this conclusion. First, you're typically a frontline fighter and someone who should look after their fellow teammates. Next, you have a large arsenal of weapons like the musket, carbine, horse artillery pistol, lance, hand axe, heavy saber, and so on. You can clear hordes very easily with your heavy saber or regular saber. And finally, being a hero should be in your nature as an infantry. Overall, these tips have helped me succeed in many games and have led me to be more vigilant no matter what class I play. And I'm sure they will help you too. If you have any questions, extra tips, or concerns, please leave a comment and let me know. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you found this helpful. I also run a custom server on Guts and Black Powder, which I will show the server's name on screen. I do lots of fun custom-made events I've come up with, such as Hide and Seek, Crusades, Undead Nightmare, and other things that you would not expect from other servers. But that's all for now. Let me know what class I should do a guide on next. Have fun playing Lion Infantry.